Namanda, 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 Namanda,
Good morning, everybody. Thank you very much for coming to the service today on November 19, 2023, uh, here uh, posted on to YouTube. So in December, uh, we observe two important events uh, as we close out the year. Uh, the first one is uh, Bodhi Day, or also known as Jodo E, and this would be on December 8th of every year. Uh, and the second one that we uh, observe is the New Year's Eve service, otherwise known as the Joya E. Bodhi Day is a time when uh, the historical Buddha Shakyamuni is said to have attained awakening under the Bodhi tree at the break of dawn. And this is the day in which he awakened to the universal principle of wisdom and compassion, thus showing us the path to spiritual liberation uh, where uh, any and all human beings can be uh, freed from the bondage of suffering. On the year end service, we recall the past kind of uh, experiences that we have all underwent uh, in that one year, and there might have been happy and joyous moments. There might have been perhaps sad moments or angry and uh, frustrating moments. Uh, at any rate, uh, other times that uh, uh, many times that where where a number of uh, of emotions were evoked. Um, still, they are all moments that have contributed to our karmic development, uh, and as such, they are indispensable in, uh, experiences. As Buddhists, we should label these moments not so much as good and bad or positive and negative, but rather see them as opportunities that have helped us to encounter the truth of the Buddha Dharma and to verify the Buddhist teachings. And for example, you know, if we have experienced a loss uh, of a loved one, this experience brings us to question what is the meaning of life and to see the Buddha Dharma as a source of solace and comfort. At the end of this service, uh, we ring the large bell 108 times, uh, signifying to remind us uh, about the, the amount of blind passions that each of us is said to have. The ritual ringing of the bell should serve as a reminder that no one is perfect, right? but that my very attachments uh, can become the source of my joy in awakening to the Buddha Dharma which is Amida Buddha's boundless wisdom and compassion. Many people are under the impression that we as Buddhists uh, must try and seek to extinguish our blind passions, or otherwise known as attachments. We think that by ridding ourselves of these blind passions, that it is somewhat like cleaning up uh, a cluttered and messy room, or that we are polishing a mirror uh, that has many smudges and smears on it. Right? However, in Jodo Shinshu Buddhism, our goal is not to extinguish our blind passions, but rather to come to terms with them, with those, right? to cope with them, to overcome them, not by ridding ourselves of them, but by learning to accept them in a truly honest way. Um, I'm reminded of an example that Deng Yoshonin, uh, the eighth head priest of uh, the Hongganji, who lived in the 15th century, um, shared with us an example that, uh, that kind of shows us the relationship that we, sh we might have with uh, blind passions. Uh, and in this example, he gives, uh, uh, he talks about a rock, right? And uh, he s explains that um, if you take a rock into the coast or to the beach, or to the water, whatever, uh, where there is a body of water, and you drop that um, heavy rock, uh, let's say a rock of this size or something like that, and you drop that into the water, uh, the rock will obviously sink to the bottom, right? And it will um, just kind of uh, make a loud noise, kerplunk, right? And it just go straight to the bottom, right? Um, and there's no way for this uh, rock to be able to, let's say, get to the other side of this body of water. However, if we were to put this rock onto a raft or a large boat of some kind, right, that rock will easily be taken to the other side uh, with, with no problem, actually 
quite with ease, right? Uh, the rock will be able to get to the other side. Um, and this, this, is, this example is to kind of show that our beings, we are beings of blind passions and that we are ever sinking and drowning in this abyss of blind passions in this world of delusion. However, when we ride the larger vehicle, the Mahayana vehicle, the vehicle of Amida Buddha's primal vow, this, uh, by vehicle I mean a large boat or a large vessel, that vessel will take us to the other side with ease, right? Uh, and it doesn't matter how afflicted we are with our blind passions, doesn't matter how many blind passions we are, or we might, we might have or harbor in our hearts, but that uh, we will be able to cross to the other shore with ease and without any hardships. And this is what Nenyoshoni kind of uh, uses in this example to be able to talk about our relationship with ourselves, but also our relationship with this world of absolute truth. So we might be inclined to think that we must extinguish the blind passions, much like what the historical Buddha Shakyamuni uh, was able to do 2,500 years ago. However, for us ordinary individuals, right, uh, that's next to impossible to do. I'm not sure uh, if it's possible uh, for myself to cut ties with my family and my friends, right? Uh, or uh, be able to not feel a sense of frustration uh, when I don't get what I want. Or, you know, when our football, favorite football team loses or, or, or when we get criticized by our coworkers and on and on and on it goes, right? According to Shinan Shonin, our founder, um, what Shakyamuni Buddha recommended for us to do was not to find a way to extinguish the passions we might harbor, but to understand that there is a world of boundless wisdom and compassion where we are embraced just as we are, despite our imperfections and shortcomings. We call this world of boundless wisdom and compassion that of enlightenment. We call the individuals who come from that world Buddha. Shakyamuni discovers this world and introduces that world to us through his teachings. And he shows us that we too can go to this place of no suffering, to the world of enlightenment. Enlightenment is a place not just reserved for the sages or special people who are able to extinguish their blind passions. Shakyamuni Buddha taught many things according to the people's needs. And these vast amounts of teachings were eventually compiled into what are known today as Shutara, or what we call in English sutras, right? And it is said that there are 84,000 of these teachings, the most important of which, for us Jyotishishu Buddhists, are the Three Pure Land Sutras. And then furthermore, to take that a step further, the Three Pure Land Sutras all teach about this one important and vital phrase that all beings can easily rely on as the way in which to get to the world of enlightenment the world we know of as the Pure Land. Shakyamuni Buddha wanted to introduce and share with all beings the one phrase known as Namo Amida Butsu. In English, we translate this phrase Namo Amida Butsu as taking refuge in Amida Buddha. In other words, the world of enlightenment and the Buddha that resides there wants to connect all sentient beings to the message of how to overcome this world of delusion. Amida Buddha is enlightenment itself in Shakyamuni, who has gone to this world and thus is also a Buddha, is the messenger of our world. As sentient beings who reside in this world of delusion, we have the rare opportunity to hear this calling voice of truth and break free from suffering. But it is extremely difficult to hear this truth 
because of the loudness of our blind passions, right? It is as loud as the ringing tone of the bell that we hit on New Year's Eve uh, at the end of the Joyae service. So this is kind of the basic gist of our teaching of Jodo Shishi Buddhism. But if we hear and receive this call with our entire being to the depths of our hearts and minds, we will awaken to a path of spiritual liberation. We do not become Buddhas in this life. We still remain ordinary beings with blind passions. However, there is nevertheless a change in our hearts, which we call in Japanese, eshin. There is this conversion that occurs. It is a change from a state of mind of utter ignorance, of utter bewilderment, and utter confusion, where we are ever, ever meandering right, in hopelessness and darkness, moving from one desire to the next, to the next, to the next, ad infinitum. And we go from that to then, when this eshing occurs, right, to then this focus uh, to have direction, to now have hope, to now have settledness of the heart and mind. Now, even things like the fear of death, right, although very real in its imminence, right, will be converted to a settled acceptance. It will be received as if we would accept the falling of the leaves on an autumn day. In what other way do we want to live? If there is another way in which you want to live, then I have to say that Buddhism is not for you. In this teaching, enlightenment is not about a path where one ranks up, right? Like goes up in belts. I know in uh, martial arts, right, we have different color belts, or we go up in belts, or, uh, you know, it's not like, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Kumon, where you do like different letter grading systems where you go to A and then to B and then to C. All right, there isn't a ranking up system where we, where we can feel prideful of, our, of one's own accomplishments. All too often do we think that uh, all things are a competition and that we need to kind of one-up each other or somehow uh, beat each other. And then uh, those who we feel are lower than us, lower than us, that we look down upon, right? That's not what this teaching is about. That's not what this teaching is for. This teaching, instead, is about acceptance. Acceptance of the imperfect life we live through a spiritual foundation that underlies and embraces all beings, all sentient beings. So in conclusion, I know it's common for us to think of Santa Claus on, in, the Dece in the month of December, right? but let's not forget our roots as Buddhists and pay tribute and honor uh, to our founder of this religion, Shakyamuni Buddha. Let's use this time to remember that the one phrase of Namo Amida Butsu is the path to find our true peace of mind, and that the close of a chapter is the beginning to a new one. Thank you. Namanda, 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 Samanda, Samanda, Samanda.